People around the world assume they know what the Gripen is. Cheap, smart, and light. A little combatant for little countries. But what if I told you that one small tweak might change everything and shift the way power is spread across continents? Stay with me, because the engine in this jet is more than just metal. It is a powerful chess piece that costs a lot of money. Think of a fighter that is quick, easy to use, and perfect for countries who don't want to spend a lot of money on the best hardware. This is what the Gripen looks like. Saab sold the Gripen for years based on that assurance. The Gripen E and F versions improved on that promise by adding additional range, electronics, and a bigger payload. There is a heart at the center of that update that most people don't see. It is the engine that converts political decisions into real power. The General Electric F414 series is that heart today. That engine gives the Gripen the power and dependability it needs to compete with heavier fighters while keeping costs down. The Gripen's choice of the F414 was not only a technical one, but also a political one. This is because the company that makes your engine is just as important as the company that makes your radar. Begin plus one. Now think about another option. Think about Sweden or one of the Gripen export customers getting rid of that American engine and putting in a new one from a British business, a European partnership, or even a local national champion. Now the plane isn't just a Swedish design with American elements, it becomes a platform that is connected to a new industrial network, a new supply chain, and new political ties. That's why conversation about new fighter engines isn't just about how well they work. It's about who gets jobs, who gets tech transfers, and who has more power in a region. Let's break this down. The Gripen E and F were made to be modern and not too expensive. They have sophisticated cockpits, advanced sensors, and enough armaments to be useful in modern wars. Engines, on the other hand, limit endurance, payload, and future improvements. The Gripen E is a considerable step up from earlier models thanks to the F414. It gives forth about 22,000 pounds of torque and has a throttle response that works well for quick jet operations. That degree of propulsion lets the Gripen carry additional fuel, weapons, or sensors without losing its speed. The end result is an aeroplane that can accomplish more missions for less money per flying hour than many other twin-engine planes. How well it works is one thing. Another thing is dependence. If you get your engine from only one foreign provider, you have to rely on that supply for replacement parts, maintenance, and government license to upgrade or export. If a supplier's government decides to prohibit exports or technology transfers, that might be a big problem for them. Every procurement officer needs to think about it. That's why some countries want to make things locally or find other sources. This is also why engine negotiations get quite political at the highest levels. Enter Rolls-Royce in a shifting world of engines in the industry. In the past few years, the main engine producers have not only gone after civilian contracts, but they have also looked at military one. Rolls-Royce has been discreetly rebuilding its reputation in the aerospace industry, in addition to its long-standing civil business. The company has goals and alliances that might put it in the middle of contests for next-generation aircraft engines. When a big engine producer that isn't American enters the fighter market, it can help countries who wish to stay out of politics with the US or that want to strengthen ties with Europe and Asia. News reports have showed that countries and businesses are actively campaigning and negotiating to change the way engines are supplied. That pressure can change who buys what. Think about people who live in South Korea, India, Brazil, and many other countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Cost, pledges of technology transfer, and the ambition to establish a local defense industry all play a role in their decisions. If a non-American engine that works well with the Gripen becomes available, it changes the deal. Some countries might be more willing to accept a Gripen with a European engine, since it could have different export restrictions and relationships. If the new engine is made in the area or has more advanced technology transfer, it becomes much more of a political prize. It means factories, engineers trained in the area, and a story about being able to do things on your own instead of relying on others. One more layer exists. Today, new engine programs are rarely national projects. They are groups of people. They help businesses from different countries work together to share risk and develop supply networks that go across borders. In the fighter realm, there are examples of how engine development for next-generation fighters sometimes involves teams from more than one country. When that happens, picking a certain engine isn't only a technical choice. It becomes a nod to the whole industrial ecology. That ecosystem can change allegiance. It can make people depend on it for a long time. It can lead to civilian spillovers in high-tech, 
manufacturing, and material science. These are not little things. They are the things that will help people have more power in the future. You might be wondering how close we are to seeing a real replacement to the F414 on the Great Pin. The quick answer is that it's hard yet possible. Changing an airplane engine is not the same as changing a car engine. It needs changes to the airframe, the shape of the intake, the fuel systems, and the way maintenance is done. It costs a lot, it's dangerous, but that is not impossible. There is a lot of motivation for governments and manufacturers. If a national or multinational engine builder offers a package that includes not just the engine, but also jobs and technology transfer in the country where it is sold, it can help them win various export competitions. That bundle can be hard to resist for countries with growing defense budgets and industrial goals. Think about the market in real terms. Saab has done a good job of marketing the Gripen as a fighter that is adaptable and good for exports. The Gripen's production plan involves collaboration, local offsets, and working together with other businesses. That sales approach makes it easy to picture a future Gripen model that can use different engines for different buyers. Saab has long stressed the importance of being modular and able to meet the needs of partners. What if an engine supplier can match performance while also making the political climate better or the business more profitable? In that situation, the Gripen is more than just a Swedish product. It is a way for the new industrial cooperation to work together. The effects are really big. They have an effect on the cost of maintaining things over time, the number of jobs created, and the political might of the countries that supply them. But let's be upfront about the trade-offs that come with technology. The F414 is an old model. Other fighters have shown it to be true. It matches the Gripen's weight and performance criteria. Any replacement engine must be able to do the same or better while yet staying within the design restrictions of the aircraft. That's a big request. Changing the engine to one that is heavier, uses more fuel, or needs a different airflow for intake will change how the plane flies. Engineers need to figure out if the pros of a new political alignment are worth the technical expenses and the costs of redesign. Money is also a big part of it. One of the most expensive phases of making an airplane is developing its engine. For companies like Rolls-Royce, GE, or Pratt & Whitney, the question is whether they will make back their money through sales and long-term maintenance contracts. For countries, the dilemma is whether paying more now for better political terms or local assembly will save them money or strategic problems down the road. This is a pattern we've seen previously. Countries have gladly paid more to acquire control over maintenance and replacement parts since not doing so would have made them more vulnerable. Then there is the reality of export controls. Engines from the US mean US rules for exporting. Those rules can decide who receives what and when. That one thing has changed the way people buy things in a number of circumstances. If a supplier has a different engine that doesn't have the same restrictions, that might open up other markets for the plane. For countries who don't get along with the US or want more latitude in how they use or improve weapons, that freedom is worth something. It's not just a theory. It has an impact on buying decisions every day. We shouldn't forget about the strategic messaging either. When a country picks a certain engine provider, it sends a message. It means that the company is in line with that supplier's native country and industry, or at least that they are willing to work with them. In today's world where alliances change quickly and regional power balances are important, those messages might be just as important as the gear itself. A plane with a non-American engine can be used to show independence and a new way of doing business. People who want that story might like these choices more. There are additional consequences on training and maintenance. Changing the engine impacts how maintenance is done. It affects the way spare parts are delivered. It alters how technicians are trained. If a country wishes to develop a basis for maintenance at home, it will probably need to share some technology and make things locally. Engine manufacturers are aware of this and will act accordingly. For decades, those deals changed the map of industry. More than just employment, they mean a lot. They mean that in the future, we will be able to fix, upgrade, and even export systems. So what does all of this mean for the balance of power in the world? Changing the way engine supply chains work can change where industrial gravity is strongest. If European or Asian engine producers get more military contracts, they will develop partnerships and dependencies that change the way alliances work. Those linkages affect decisions about buying ships, radars, missiles, and logistics. They decide who can work together in a crisis and who can help each other while things are calm. Engines are, in short, lever points. They can transport political power and industrial might across boundaries. 
We can already detect signals of competition outside of our usual partner. Governments and businesses are working hard to support local partnerships, joint ventures, and accords to share technology. That isn't a new tendency, but it is getting bigger. The stakes are significant since defense manufacture affects both civilian industry and research. The expertise and materials utilized in engines are applied in power systems, materials science, and sophisticated manufacturing. The person who is in charge of engine technology will have an impact on more than simply military weapons. They will make plans for the economy and long-term technical leadership. Now let's make this more personal. This is important to you as a taxpayer and a voter. If you live in a country that is thinking about the Gripen, choosing one engine over another might change where industries are located, how many engineers are taught, and how much power your country has over its own defense. It will decide if your Air Force can update its jets without any political problem. It will also affect the types of diplomatic ties your country strengthens. The ability to collaborate with more than one engine partner is a plus for the Gripen program itself. It maintains the platform competitive and gives buyers who care about politics and industry as much as they do about how well the plane flies more choices. Saab's way of working with partners and making things locally has already helped the Gripen secure sales in a number of markets. If a better option than the F-414 comes up that offers similar performance and better business terms, the Grapen could become very popular. That might change the balance of air power in the region, because buyers who didn't want the Grapen before because of engine politics might change their minds. There is a warning. There are real problems with the technology and cost of engine changes. Changing the engines on aircraft in the past has proven how hard and expensive it can be. When making a decision, you need to think about both the short-term costs and the long-term benefits. That maths is very important for making plans for defense and for national finances. This is also why it typically takes years and complicated talks between governments and businesses to make these kinds of decisions. We should also remember that engines are being redesigned to be more efficient and to be better for the environment. New designs focus on using less fuel and materials that can handle higher temperatures and work better. Those improvements make the range longer and the cost of running it lower. They also make it possible to do more clandestine operations by making them last longer and taking up less space. For countries that are looking ahead, the prospect of engines that are better for the environment and more efficient can be a big selling point. Expect more jockeying around engine supply in the next 10 years. Countries will utilize procurement to make sure that businesses work together and to improve their own skills. Engine companies will compete not only on how well their engines work, but also on how many different types of engines they offer. And you can expect the Gripen program to be in the middle of that race because its main selling point is that it is flexible and cheap. Don't just brush off the words, new engine could shift global power as marketing. A new power plant can influence where industries are located, which nations train technicians, who has access to spare parts, and who makes decisions when there is a problem or disagreement. It can change the balance of power in politics just like a new base or treaty can. The Gripen shows that an aeroplane is more than just metal and software. It is a part of a bigger network of business, politics, and strategy. To sum up, here's a clear point. The Gripen's main strength has always been how well it can change, not just its wings and radar, but also the choices made about the engine under the hood will determine how strong it will be in the future. The Gripen may find new clients and new functions if other engine suppliers can match the F-414's performance while offering better business conditions and fewer political strings. That's how planes change the world. That's how one machine fits into a bigger story about power and who has it. Nah, nah, nah. Hit like and subscribe if you want a more straightforward conversation about planes, engines, and how defense choices affect the world. It helps me go deeper like this and keeps you up to date on the next big change in air power.